Hello, it's your girl Crow Nicole, and welcome back to my channel. I know you guys are like, where she been? I went back to work, shouties. Anyway, I am here to give you guys a breastfeeding update video, whatever the case may be. So if you want to know my little tips and tricks about breastfeeding, then keep on watching. Okay, first and foremost, let's talk about breastfeeding. I decided to breastfeed Kaysen because I breastfed Phoenix, which is my second child, my middle child, my only girl, whatever you want to call her. I decided to breastfeed her, and I ended up breastfeeding her for about three years before I actually stopped. And I only stopped breastfeeding her because I was going back. I was going to work, beginning my career. So that's why I stopped breastfeeding with her. Okay, so let's talk about the beginning stages when I first had Kaysen. Uh, when I first got pregnant with Kaysen, I knew that I wanted to breastfeed, so I did have nipple piercings that I did take out um, prior to him actually being here, prior to my breast actually starting to be full and all those types of things. When Kaysen was born, we latched in the hospital. Now, the first time you latch at the hospital is going to be a little mm, not so good, uncomfortable, like you're already in pain. Well, I had a C-section, so I was already in pain with my scar. So it's hard to move about like you want to. So then you're sitting in this awkward position all day, so your back is hurting. So now your incision is hurting, your back is hurting, you're frustrated, and you're trying to latch. So the first couple of times he latched on at the hospital was very, very, very uncomfortable. It was almost painful. It felt like I was being bit, but it's just because he had to get used to it, and I had to get used to it. Which is so funny because I was like breastfed for three years. Why does it hurt? It is just the way that your breasts have to get used to being latched on in the way that the child has to be comfortable with using his mouth to latch on to drink that milk. So, it, so it's just a typical breastfeeding thing. It is not one of those painful things that's going to keep happening. Okay. Now let me tell you another thing that happens. Um, if you are not breastfeeding regularly from both breasts, even though you're going to have what they call a slacker boob, um, and that just means that that boob does not produce as much milk as the other breast. But if you do not try to feed or pump from both breasts, you will get an infected, swollen breast. And it's called mattis. I don't know if I pronounced that word. Mm -hmm. I may not, but I'm going to put it up here. And what happens is your breasts are really, really full, and they become sore and irritated. And you got to kind of squeeze them with your own hands to kind of get that extra milk out. So it does not bother you at all. So it doesn't hurt you. My baby is looking at me. He's staring at me. I feel so excited when he's looking at me like that. But anyway, um, yeah, so you have to kind of squeeze that massage it out. So also, in the beginning, you want to make sure that you're keeping nipple cream on hand, on deck, all day, every day. I kept mine. Soon as I was done, whoop, 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 because your nipples will get dry and cracked and brittle. And if you do not do that, it is going to be very uncomfortable for you and very uncomfortable for the baby. Now, mind you, I am um, two months into breastfeeding, and I am not using the nipple cream anymore. However, I did use it faithfully for two, maybe three weeks when I was at home, and it, we was getting in that beginning routine. We did that. Now, let's talk about some other things, like um, not knowing if your baby's getting enough milk. Be confident that your baby is getting enough milk, because believe me, they are getting what they need, and they're going to pull away when they are when they've had enough. You always know when they've had enough. They have this um consistent sucking at the beginning. And when it starts to slow down, you will know when that baby is done for eating eating for that period of time. I breastfeed on demand so there's not a set schedule when I'm actually um uh, nursing him from me. However when I am taking breast milk to the babysitter, he is on a set time. He's on about two, two and a half hour feeding time but when he's with me there's no set time he is breastfed on demand and he will let you know when he's ready and he'll let you know if you push him off too early like <laughs> that baby break doesn't hold let you know okay let's talk about breastfeeding at work okay so i went back to work last week so it's been two months i've been at home been able to breastfeed on demand da, 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 all this good stuff so i only pumped prior to going back to work maybe two or three times and that was just so i could have a little drink and drink and just so I could see how it would work. And I was trying to get into the hang of things before I went back to work. But it did not work for me because I was breastfeeding on demand. However, when I went back to work, I had to put myself on a timer. So now at work, I go and I pump every two hours or so. So I pump in the morning at 9 during my planning period. 
Then I pump again around 11, 11.30 ish during lunchtime. Then I pump again right before I leave work to go get him, which is about 3 o'clock, 3.30 ish. So um, it's not necessarily two hours, every two hours, but it's like a set pattern. I know when I'm going, my body knows when I'm going, and I try to get enough milk. I try to get at least four to five ounces every time. So therefore, whatever I produce in one day is good enough for him the next day while he's at the babysitter. So now I'm sending about 20 ounces to the babysitter, which is almost a little too much just for four bottles, which he really don't need, but about 15 ounces for about three bottles. But I do send 25 ounces. Okay, now, let's talk about my breastfeeding bag for work. I know I'm talking about a lot of stuff like that. This is the bag that I'm carrying at work. This is a pink bag, of, no, a Victoria's Secret bag. So this is called, um, What Is Your Secret Moment? Secret Moments by Victoria's Secret. I think we had to purchase something to get this bag. I can't remember. I've had it for a while. We used to take it to the beach. Yeah. Yeah, I did. We used to go to the beach. I used to take it to the beach. So this is the bag that I am carrying. And inside of this bag just houses all the things that I need to breastfeed. Okay, so let's talk about those things that I need to breastfeed. So I'm standing so I don't have a table next to me. <laughs> it's kind of awkward. Okay, so the very first thing that I have is um a little ziploc baggie and this ziploc bag houses the bottles and the breast shields that actually come with the breast pump that i use i use the medela advanced pumping breast pump some crap like that i'll tell you guys exactly what that is but when i get to it but these are the bottles and the nibble shields that come with it these are um this is a great brand because they sell their parts at Target. So if anything, it breaks or if the nipple shields are too big or too small, you can go to Target to replace them. These bottles actually come with nipple tops that you actually feed straight from these bottles. You can also attach your own bottles to these nipple shields. So you can actually pump straight to a bottle that you want him to, your baby to drink out of later. So... The Medela is a very universal. The bottles are five ounce bottles a piece, and I do pump, I double pump every time I pump just so I can get the maximum amount of milk in the smallest amount of time because I only stay in there about 10 minutes. I take 15 minutes, so it takes me about two minutes to sit up, 10 minutes to pump, and two minutes to clean up. So it I get out of there in about 15 minutes. I get back to my classroom, so I'm not gone too long. But I keep the bottles in a separate bag, simply so like they, I can keep them kind of sanitized, sterilized, all that kind of stuff. I do wash them, or after each pumping, try to dry them out as best as I can, so I get back to my classroom. Put them in this bag. I know some people use the steamer bags, but if I'm going to go pump again in about two hours, and then by the time I'm at home, I can actually take them into the kitchen and use hot water and soap for them. So I don't think the uh, steamer bags are necessary. And these are cheaper, reusable, wash the Ziploc bags, and keep moving. I um, use another Ziploc bag and just store all the bags of milk that I produce for the day. And we're going to talk about those bags in just a minute. So I keep a Ziploc bag to store the milk. Ziploc bag of napkins just so I can speed the process up with cleaning. Especially when you take them off and they start dripping milk. So you want to clean up. So I keep a Ziploc bag of uh, napkins. I have two permanent markers and these are just plain old regular pen mark markers from the Dollar Tree. And then I have the actual breast milk storage bags. And these are the pre-sterilized medical grade bags. Um, and they open like a tissue pack dispenser. And these are the Up and Up brand from Target. So, yeah, they're really good. I got 100 packs. So you get two 50 packs of these in a box. And I bought two boxes. They should last me for a minute. And these are a uh, open tissue pack dispenser like this. So, you just pull them out like so. So, I'm going to pull one out so you guys can see what it looks like. And why I got the markers. Okay. So, I have the markers because on these, they have the little, let's see. They had a little date tag here, so even the date, how much milk you pump, you can give it a name, I guess, if you had multiples or you were feeding two children at once or something like that. Yeah, you have that, and then I have the time. I only have like a minute left, guys, to tell you guys this. And then it just has the um, ounces that you're pumping, okay? And this is the breast pump that I actually received free through my insurance. The only thing I had to pay for was a $10 shipping fee because I do not live in the area where... Um, they have them. So it comes in this cute 
this convenient little bag. However, you can't store everything else in here. So, let's open this up. Inside of here is the actual pump. And it has this dial that turns on and does it have the different suction sites. This butt button right here changes the let down. This is where you put the um, charger, I mean not the charger, the plug. And then this right here is so you can put the valves, the tubes here. One on each side. Now if you want to pump singly, you take this off and you cut one of the valves up. Up here I do have my tubes. Tubes have to be clean and sterilized as well. So what I normally do is once I finish with it, I kind of try to shake it to try to get some of the wetness out of it. And then later on I'll leave it out and just let it dry. Um, I, not, I have not had any issues with breastfeeding. And breastfeeding is actually very beneficial for me and for baby. I am losing the weight. He is gaining the weight. So if you have any other questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. And until the next time, bye.